Hello, how are you? This is Yeshua said my name. When I woke up uh, last night, actually it was pretty early in the morning, uh, the Holy Spirit put a topic on my mind, uh, that one of the topics that I would like to cover during today's live chat. So even though this is a recorded video, uh, we are discussing things live. And I've had a lot of feedback lately from people asking that we have more live chat sessions. So I'm very excited to do that as well. I find it very fulfilling and I hope that you do as well. Uh, some of the topics we will be discussing during this live chat, uh, I uh, will be dealing with spiritual depression and anxiety. I've had some people contact me uh, telling me, and it's like a cry for help, uh, that they don't want to be here any longer, that they wish that the Lord would just take their lives. They don't feel like they're fulfilling a purpose. So I wanted to read some scriptures from God's word. And as I'm doing so, and as we're discussing this, um, and I'm, I'm giving my viewpoint, or I'm discussing God's word about this, uh, please, in the comment section, uh, as we're enjoying this live chat, uh, encourage one another if you're dealing with this. Um, if you are dealing with a sense of depression or anxiety, no matter what it may be, maybe it's a health issue, maybe it's a marriage issue, maybe it's finances, uh, maybe you're dealing with um, anxiety over whether you're really the Lord's or not. Um, there is spiritual warfare going on where Satan will try and convince people that uh, that they're not the Lord's. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, what I always tell people when they're dealing with that fear and that anxiety is that Satan will leave his own children alone. No one who is truly saved or born again will ever struggle or doubt uh, I, I mean, we'll never ever, I'm, I'm sorry, someone who's not saved will not wonder constantly day after day with anxiety, am I saved? Am I really the Lord's? Um, this is one of Satan's greatest tactics is to try and convince people that they don't belong to the Lord. So maybe you're dealing with that anxiety. Uh, as a matter of fact, Satan is a thief, Jesus said. A thief is not going to come and try and steal something that you don't have. If you weren't the Lord's, then Satan wouldn't be, wouldn't be trying to attack something that you uh, that you didn't have. In other words, let's just say that, um, uh, well, I, I don't have a pool, but let's just say that I had a pool or a hot tub or, or a particular object in uh, or, or something valuable in my home, and I was constantly worried that a thief would come and take it. Well, I'd only be worried about it if I actually had it, correct? If I didn't have it, then a thief would leave me alone or I wouldn't be worried about it. If you weren't the Lord's and you weren't a child of God, you wouldn't be worried about whether or not you're right with God. Uh, someone who does not fear the Lord, does not care about if they have a relationship with Christ or not, is not dealing with a depression or anxiety over whether or not they're really the Lord's or not. Um, someone who does belong to the Lord, this is one of Satan's favorite tactics, is to try and convince them and torment them with these lies that they don't really belong to Christ. As a matter of fact, if you examine yourself to see whether you are truly in the faith and you worry about it and you're anxious over it, that usually is proof 99.9% .9 of the time that either the Holy Spirit is drawing you to examine your heart and come to him or you really are the Lord's and you're under a spiritual attack or spiritual depression. Uh, maybe you're dealing with loved ones that you're praying for. Uh, that are not coming out of a cult system and you've been praying for them to come out or maybe you're just dealing with a depression and anxiety that has no name to it. Uh, there are people in the scriptures that we will read about um, today who have dealt with uh, anxiety and depression. Um, David uh, spoke about this in the Psalms um, and stated, uh, why so downcast, O my soul? I will yet hope in God. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, was considered the weeping prophet. Um, he actually, uh, there have been many prophets in the scriptures that have wished, uh, including Job, wished that they had never been born. Um, we've had uh, apostles in the New Testament that stated they were so hard pressed on every side and beaten down that they even despaired of life. Uh, the scripture tells us there is nothing that we are facing that is not common to man. Do not be surprised. The word of God tells us at the fiery trial you are suffering for what there is nothing you are enduring that is not common to man. And in the book of Hebrews, we are told that Christ himself, because he is our great high priest and our kinsman redeemer, he has experienced everything that we have. He's been tried and tempted and been through everything that we have yet without sin. So we can boldly approach the throne of grace and ask for help in time of need. So I wanted to make that one of the themes that we discussed today. Um, if you need prayer, 
uh, if you are dealing with uh, an anxiety or a depression, or if you're, if you need help and you need to talk to someone, there are people on this channel that I'm sure have experienced it. There are people on this channel that would be willing to pray for you. Maybe you can exchange email addresses. Um, I want this to be a place where people can come together and know that there are others out there that can help you. Uh, you know, uh, spiritual anxiety and depression is one of Satan's tactics. And if he, he cannot take you away from the Lord, but if he can hinder your ability to serve God, through your anxiety or depression, it is a very effective tool because in the scriptures it states, as a man thinketh, so is he. And if Satan can convince you that you're worthless, if he can convince you your life's not worth living, if he can convince you that you mean you don't mean anything to the kingdom of God, or that you'll never change, or that someone else in your life will never change, or maybe uh, you struggle and lay awake at night worrying, am I really, am, am I really the Lord's or not? All whatever it is that Satan is using as a tool in your life can be used as a weapon. Um, even though he knows he can't take you out of the hand of God, he may try and stop you from being successful in serving God. Uh, one of the, you know, uh, things that happens to a deer in the headlights, they freeze, don't they? Fear, anxiety causes them to simply freeze. Uh, Satan could be using fear, anxiety, depression, because he knows he can't take you out of God's hand, he can cause you to freeze or stand still or be stagnant in serving the Lord because he knows that those emotions can cause you to either serve God or uh, or, or just stay where you are. Uh, so I wanted to um, also cover a couple of different topics. So that, that's one topic I wanted to cover, and I will be going over some scriptures with you about spiritual anxiety and depression and show you that you're not alone, that there have even been uh, men and women in the scriptures who have dealt with that. Uh, but I also wanted to cover a couple of other um, prophetic updates. Um, there was an article that came out that I read this morning very early. Uh, it says the Pope, comma, Pachamama politics and the periphery, everything is connected. And this is coming from uh, ricochet.com. And I'll put a link down in the description section for you. Uh, it says the Pope Pachamama politics and the periphery, everything is connected. And I, I agree because in Revelation 17, we are told that this mystery Babylon, um, this religious system rides the world system, rides the beast, Revelation chapter 17, uh, and rules over the kings of the earth. And one of the, uh, goals of this mystery Babylon that rules the kings of the earth is to bring about a one world religion. And we are seeing this yet again, more in our faces, taking place with this Amazon Synod, with this pagan ceremony going on and pagan statues and pagan worship. Um, it says here, uh, and this, comment, this article was written on October the 20th, 2019 by Scott Wilmot. Again, I'll put a description, I mean, I linked down in the description section for you. In a previous post, I characterized the currently ongoing Amazonian Synod as, quote, one of the most bizarre and potentially very destructive events of the Francis pontificate. Little did I know of the horrors that were about to occur when I wrote that. On Friday, October the 4th, to get the festivities rolling, a, quote, tree planting ceremony took place in the Vatican Gardens to consecrate the synod to St. Francis of Assisi. But what we got was a pagan ritual centered around the now infamous Pachamama. Now, in a previous video, I explained to you who and what Pachamama is. It is really another name for Mother Earth, and the Amazonians call her Pachamama, which is Mother Earth. And they worship her, sacrifice to her, pray to her, and hold ceremonies to her as a real goddess in their minds. So to host something like this at the Vatican and have the papacy and the, the bishops and the people that were joining in not stand up for the sake of Christ and bring that sort of division that Christ calls for. When he said, so don't, do not suppose I come to bring peace on the earth, I come to bring a sword. Jesus was talking about not doing bad to our enemies, but standing for the truth and not compromising the truth for the sake of peace. That is the sword that we are to bring. That is the sword that Christ brought. Um, and there was a picture here in this article of, and a video of, uh, this pagan ceremony taking place with this Amazonian synod. Uh, it says here, it goes on, when the journalist asked about the statue of the naked pregnant woman who seems to be everywhere, the Pope is, 
the respondents couldn't really explain who or what it is. So the Pope is sitting there um, and it, uh, watching this whole thing going on without, you know, without stopping it. Why? It's because this new world religion, okay, is, is going to take place prophetically where uh, this dynasty of the man of sin uh, exalt himself above all that is called God so that everything that was uh, that is worshipped, he is now worshipped in place of it. So whatever he states is the true religion of the world, people will follow suit. Uh, everyone has by now seen the naked pregnant female figure painted red that has popped up in the Vatican gardens before altars and in a formal exhibition in the Carmelite Church a few hundred yards from St. Peter's Square. No one has come forward or been able to delve into the reality to say exactly what the figure and other indigenous objects mean. Obviously, they're pagan. It says, yes, she's the uh, Pachamama, the goddess of the earth or world slash universe in some areas of the Amazon, the fertility goddess in Peru, etc. To anyone who takes the first commandment seriously, meaning thou shalt have no other gods before me, this is not kids playing with dolls, but the kind of idolatry or worship of strange gods, quote unquote, that from first to last, the Bible and the whole tradition warn against. So LifeSite News has been coming out against this. Church Militant has been coming out against this. So it's not just Protestants. Uh, that are coming up and exposing this, according to Ephesians 5.11, it is also um, devout Catholic sources. And in Revelation 17, God prophesies that he would begin to awaken people's eyes, that he would begin to call them out of this Babylonian pagan system, come out of her, my people, Revelation 17. And the article goes on to state idolatry and worshiping of strange gods at the Vatican. Okay, now this has been going on since Pope John Paul II when he had Indian chanters and Hindus and, uh, you know, uh, you name it there. I mean, he, he, had, he had a whole prayer garden thing going on, even back when Pope John Paul II was the Pope. As if witnessing this blasphemy is not enough, they are also subjecting us to insults. Um, and it goes on to talk about insulting the gospel, insulting that Christ is the only way. Uh, it states here, um, uh, going on and going on, it is quite telling uh, that uh, Spardaro's report at the midway point of the synod contains not a single mention of Jesus, Christ or evangelization, not a single mention of Jesus, Christ or evangelization, and this is outrageous. So this article here that I'll, I'll put a link down for you in the description section is the Pope, Pachamama politics, and the periphery, everything is connected. And the reason this is taking place is because it was prophesied in the scriptures that we would have uh, a seat or a seat of authority where a man would exalt himself, would speak blasphemies uh, in the face of Almighty God, that they would be, they'd be mystery Babylon, which means incorporating paganism yet cloaking itself with a form of Christianity, cloaking itself with a form of God, but denying the power thereof. Christ said, do not suppose I come to bring peace on the earth, I come to bring a sword. Now to many, that would be offensive. If you heard your pastor or a priest standing in a pulpit saying, I'm not coming to bring peace, I'm coming to bring a sword. Most people would get up and walk out of the church, wouldn't they? And say, well, I don't wanna have anything to do with this person not realizing that Christ himself preached the very same thing. Yes, he did say to do good to an enemy. Yes, he did say to feed an enemy and give an enemy something to drink, but he never said to compromise the truth of the gospel, the truth of who Christ said he is, simply to please everyone and incorporate every pagan religion. All right, we, we can't, the Lord said, mix oil and water, dark and light. What fellowship does light have with darkness and vice versa? And the scripture tells us, woe to he or she that calls good evil and calls evil good. So we have to be on the lookout for that. Speaking of evil, 
Um, this is a subject I haven't um, delved very much into, um, and I'll put a link down in the description section for you. If you're just joining us, um, we're having a live chat right now. Uh, we will be discussing uh, and sharing scriptures on spiritual depression and anxiety. So if you're just joining us in this chat, welcome. Um, I felt the Lord lay that on my heart recently uh, to comfort people with the word of God if they're dealing with anxiety and depression and help them to understand that there have been great men and women of the scriptures that have gone through the same thing. Um, I'm also discussing this uh, latest uh, news update uh, that I'll put a link down in the description section for you, dealing with this Amazonian synod and the paganism that is taking place. Um, so on to the next article that I have here. Uh, this is uh, from actually um, Nige Webb, and I'll put a link down for you. It is dealing with Rihanna, and I don't get into Hollywood stars very much, but I thought this was kind of interesting because remember in the wilderness, when Jesus was tempted, um, Satan offered Jesus the riches and rulership of the world apart from the cross, stating, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you all things. Well, Rihanna is quoted as saying, Satan will make your dreams come true. Stop wasting your time with Jesus. And there are many in Hollywood that have actually come out and given testimonies and given interviews stating as such that they are, they've sold their soul to the devil, that they, uh, you know, that they'd rather have the riches of this world and fame and fortune that Satan will offer them. Uh, so uh, apparently she's quoted as saying, Satan will make your dreams come true. Stop wasting your time with Jesus. And this is apparently from Rihanna. Um, so again, if you're just joining us, this is a live chat. We're discussing various topics here. So jump in, let's have conversation. I've had many people tell me that they wanted more live chat sessions. So here you go. So uh, the chat is live, even though the recording is recorded. Uh, join in, it's, it's a live chat. So let, let's all talk about these things. Um, I'll be reading the scriptures on spiritual anxiety and depression in a moment, um, and we'll touch base on that as well as continue with prophetic topics and this topic here that I'm delving into, which I'll put a link down for you in the description section. Popstar advises young fans to worship the devil rather than Jesus. Popstar Rihanna has told a group of children, and of course teenagers or young people, that praying to Jesus is a waste of time and that Satan is the only one that will make your dreams come true. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? Uh, this is what Satan told Jesus in the wilderness when Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted and to be tried, he said the same thing to Jesus. Why go to the cross? Why go through all the humiliation and the torture? Um, I'll give you all the riches and kingdoms of the world now. You don't have to do what the Father wants you to do. Just do it my way. Um, so she's saying here, praying to Jesus is a waste of time and that, quote, Satan is the only way that will make your dreams come true. The singer told a group of her young fans that asking for help from someone who doesn't exist is the definition of stupidity. So she's also claiming atheism here, too, that Jesus doesn't exist, so why talk to him? Uh, during a visit to Native Bar Barbados, she stated these things. She was speaking at an official ceremony organized by the uh, Barbadian government who had renamed the, to the street she grew up on in her honor. During the event where they unveiled the newly named Rihanna Drive in Bridgetown, Barbados, she took the opportunity to give some advice to young Bajan children uh, who wanted to follow in her footsteps. Speaking to the children in attendance, she said she knew it wasn't easy being born in Bridgetown, saying, it's a struggle and you have to work twice as hard to achieve anything. You have to hustle. I'm still hustling. But then she goes on to say, how many of you all have prayed to Jesus for years? And she asked for a show of hands. All right. Um, and have you gotten anything back from him? Rihanna asked the audience. Comprised of mostly teenagers and young people, hands up, be honest, it's okay. So she's coming out to these children and these young people, these young adults, these teenagers, and telling them that it's a waste of time, that if you want fame and fortune and riches, just turn to Satan. Okay. Um, she states here, quote, Jesus doesn't care about you. Do you really think he is even listening? Again, promoting atheism. Uh, he doesn't even exist. Um, stop wasting your time, be efficient, and go straight to Satan. Everything you ever dreamed of can be yours. All you have to do is ask. And of course, on this 
uh, picture here uh, on this article here in Barbados that shows this Rihanna drive. Now, I'll show you this in a second. Remember when Jesus stated that what will it profit a person, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his or her own soul? You can have it all, be it all, and yet if you lose your own soul because you don't go through Christ, who is the only way, you have no hope. Your hope has died with you. And it saddens me because we need to pray for Rihanna that the Lord will reveal himself to her in a very personal way. Um, remember, we're to pray for people, not simply bash them and, and wish them ill. The Lord does not desire the death of the wicked. He wants them to turn and repent and be saved. So this is a picture of Rihanna Drive. I mean, hopefully this, this will come through. But this is a picture of the street that they named after her. Um, and, you know, so you can have streets named after you, have all the riches of the world, have people love you and laud your praise. But if you don't know Jesus, you have absolutely nothing. You're a dead man walking. So Satan will make your dreams come true. Stop wasting your time with Jesus, according to Rihanna. And I'll put a link down in the description section for you. Sadly, this is a lot of what is happening or has happened with people in Hollywood. That's why when, you know, a born again Christian is given the opportunity or a platform, e either as a sports figure or as an actor or actress, uh, you know, I, I always pray that the Lord would use them to be a witness to the watching world because this world is so dark. You know, there are some sports figures that will actually give God glory on the, on the sporting fields or during sporting events. And I'm always thankful for that. Or you'll have Christian actors and actresses that will give God the glory for any awards that they receive or will share the gospel or, or come out and say they gave their lives to Christ. So we need to pray that more people would be given that opportunity that are born again Christians and love the Lord because sadly the majority of Hollywood, it seems, is going this route. That, you know, what did Jesus say? What does it profit you to gain the whole world and lose your own soul? It profits you nothing, absolutely nothing. So uh, getting back to it, um, we discussed another update actually on uh, the Pope and Pachamama uh, and uh, how it says here that um, Pachamama politics uh, it, and the periphery is everything. And of course, we've learned about that because Revelation 17 says Mystery Babylon is indeed incorporating every religious system into what she calls Christianity. And this is modern day Vatican City State which is identified in Revelation 17 and 18. And I'll put a link down in the description section for you. This article was just written yesterday. So uh, you can prayerfully look that up. And I thought again, I'd share this article about Rihanna with you simply because it's sad. And, and we need to pray for these people that the Lord would raise up more people uh, that can be a witness for him uh, in uh, plat platforms that they've been given, you know, to reach people, platforms that are that can reach millions. Um, but if you're just joining us, uh, we're doing a live chat this morning covering prophetic topics on the Amazon Synod, um, the uh, Mystery Babylon. We're talking about um, uh, actors and actresses in Hollywood that are praising Satan and telling young people to do the same to get what they want out of life. And we're also dealing with uh, the topic of spiritual anxiety and depression. And if you have ever dealt with that, you're not alone. And I want to read you some scriptures that will help encourage you. Um, there are people in the scriptures that have dealt with this very thing. Uh, David wrote many times and lamented to the Lord uh, his sorrows. Uh, the book of Isaiah tells us to pour out our hearts like water in the presence of the Lord and don't hold back. Be yourself. The prophet Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. OK, um, the apostles in the New Testament stated they were so hard pressed on every side, beaten down, exhausted, that they despaired of life. So please don't think that if you're going through this right now, whatever may be the cause of your anxiety or depression, and maybe there's no outward cause at all. You just simply feel that way and you don't know why. Know that you're not alone and that the word of God tells us that do not be shocked at the fiery trial that you are enduring as though something strange were happening to you because what you are enduring is common to man. Even Christ himself in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweat, drops of blood the night before he gave his life for us. He knows what it's like. As a matter of fact, it was prophesied 
that the Messiah would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with bitterest grief, that he was despised and rejected of men. So imagine that, your own Savior, Jesus, who came to give his life for you, knows what it's like to be rejected and despised, knows what it's like to be a man of sorrows and acquainted with bitterest grief. So you're not alone. And you have a high priest that you can go to. You have a savior that you can go to and talk to in the privacy of your heart that understands exactly what you are feeling because he has tasted everything that you have tasted and gone through, but without sin. So let me take, let me open up to some of these scriptures here um, that I have, hopefully that will help you and encourage you. And this is dealing with um, um, anxiety, uh, depression, so let me see if I can find some for you here. Okay, yes, uh, one that I just read you. First Peter 4, 12, and 13. And if you're just joining us, this is a live chat. Uh, I've been asking uh, people to give me feedback on whether or not they wanted more live chats. So I've had a resounding yes, and a majority of people coming forward and saying we want more live streams, live chats. So uh, the discussion is live here this morning, so please join in, all right? We've been talking about different topics here, prophecy-related, uh, and now we're going to be getting into this, uh, these scriptures here that deal with anxiety and depression. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory will be revealed, you, will, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. 1 Peter 4.12 uh, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, Romans 8, 26. Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will uphold you, and I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Isaiah 41 10. John 14 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Uh, let me see here. I want to go. Oh, okay. And this, this one I'm about to read you is uh, one of my favorites, actually. Um, Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and neither will the flame kindle upon you. It means you're not going to be consumed by what you're going through when you belong to the Lord. Psalm 34, 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all of their troubles. All right. It says here in Isaiah 49, 15, can a woman forget her, her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her own womb? Yea, they may forget or your mother may forget, but behold, I will not forget you. I have engraven you on the palms of my hands and thy walls or your situations are continually before me. Psalm, I'm sorry, Isaiah 49, 15. Psalm 147, 3. He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Do you hear that? Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are on you. Put your name in there and his ears are open unto their cry. If you're just joining us, we're, this is a live chat session right now. Uh, we've been discussing, welcome, I'm glad you're here. We've been discussing ang spiritual anxiety and depression, going over some scriptures that can help edify you, um, giving you an opportunity to maybe chat with others here that may be going through that uh, to help you know you're not alone and that people here will pray for you. Uh, we've been discussing prophetic updates concerning the Amazonian Synod and the One World Religion, um, and also discussing um, a member of Hollywood that stated, oh, we need to turn, her name is Rihanna, that we need to turn to Satan rather than Christ to have all our dreams fulfilled. So if you want to backtrack, if you've just joined in, once this um, live chat is over, backtrack and you can hear what we discussed in the beginning. But if you're just joining in, welcome to the live chat. Right now we're discussing um, scriptures to encourage 
you if you are going through anxiety or depression of any kind. All right, so moving on here. All right, Psalm 119, 71, David says something very, it's, it sounds cryptic, okay? It sounds kind of mysterious, but it has a purpose because God works everything together for our good. David says, it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn your statutes. In other words, David is saying, it's good that I was afflicted. It's good that I went through trials and tribulations so that I would learn your ways. God uses things in our lives, whether good or bad, and works them for his purposes. I mean, look at what happened to Joseph when his brothers sold him into slavery and threw him down a hole. God used it for the, during the famine that Egypt suffered for seven years. You know, he used, he used Joseph's terrible situations and the ways that he was treated through his anxiety and depression to benefit many people. So before you judge your situation, whatever situation you're in, it's hopeless, there's nothing good that can come of this. Remember, look back at the story of Joseph. How did God bring good out of that situation? And Joseph could have given up and said, I'm just despairing of life. All this is happening to me. I've done nothing to deserve it. I don't understand this. What good can come of this? You have no idea because we can't see the future, only God can what God may be doing in your life that will benefit other people through what you're going through right now. And remember, one of Satan's greatest weapons, if he can't take you from God, is to stop you from serving the Lord, is to stop you from doing what God wants you to do because you're emotionally crippled. And, and that's one of my favorite terms to use uh, in dealing with anxiety and depression, is if you're emotionally crippled, Satan can use that as a weapon to stop you from being who God wants you to be. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our tribulation or trials or sorrows, that we may be able to comfort those which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God. Isn't that what we we're just saying? That you may be going through something that makes no sense, but what if you what you're enduring right now is not just simply for you? What if it's for someone else's benefit? What if someone else will benefit from what you're going through right now? What if someone approaches you a year or two or three years from now with something they're dealing with, God has gotten you through it, and now you're able to witness to them or help them through it? That's what it says here, that God comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble with the comfort God has given us. And that's from 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 and 4. All right, Romans 8, 3, 8. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you grasping that? There is nothing, death, life, angels, powers, principalities, things present, things to come height, depth, nor any creature will ever be able to separate you from Christ and from his love. So I wanted this to be, um, if, if you're just joining us, uh, this is a live chat here that we're having to encourage those who may be going through some anxiety and depression, that you're not alone. Uh, Jeremiah was considered a weeping prophet. David himself said, why am I so downcast, O oh, my soul? We are told in the scriptures that we are to pour out our hearts to God like water. Be yourself with God. You don't have to come with flowery speech and these and thous. Just talk to the Lord. Talk to him. Have a personal relationship with him. All right. What about if you're feeling discouraged? Do you want to hear some scriptures on that? If you're feeling discouraged and, and maybe you feel like giving up or, or maybe there's no reason to, to go on. Um, Psalm 31, 24 states, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all you that hope in the Lord. So he's saying here that he'll strengthen your heart. Wait on him. Um, all right. Psalm 103, it says here, like a father pities his children. So the Lord pities them that fear him. 
for he knoweth our frame and he remembers that we are but dust. We're going to fail, we're going to stumble, and we're going to make mistakes. And he remembers we are but dust. It says in the scriptures that a smoldering wick Christ will not put out. A bruised reed he will not break. If you're that smoldering wick or that bruised reed, do you know it says he won't cast you away? So as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities you. Psalm 103. All right. Um, let me see here. Let me continue to go on here. So if you're just joining us in this live chat, welcome. We're discussing um, many different topics here. Prophecy. Uh, we're discussing encouraging one another in Christ, whether you're dealing with anxiety and depression. Uh, I did a prophecy update today on the Amazonian Synod. So if you're just joining this live chat, feel free to replay it uh, at the end of this session and, and hear the update with that. I put a news link. Uh, in the video for you, and you can also look that up as well and see exactly uh, what that news link was talking about. Uh, let me see here. Psalm 4, 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. In other words, if you belong to him, he sets you apart for himself. And the Lord will hear when I call to him. Not maybe, he will hear. He's God. He's everywhere all at once. He hears everything you say. There's nowhere you can be. Psalm 139 states, he knows whether I sit or whether I stand. He knows my thoughts from afar. He's God. There's nothing that you can think or say or go or do that he is not aware of. So when it states here in Psalm 5, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm 4, verse 3, but know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself, that you're set apart for him. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Not sometimes, not maybe. He will hear when I call to him. Read Psalm 139 if you want to know about God's sovereignty over your life and how much he knows about you. It says he knows the very number of hairs on your head. He knows whether you sit or whether you stand. Okay? So, I, you know, I wanted to give you some scriptures here that you could look at. Um, so uh, uh, here, I'm sorry, look at if you have your Bible with you, but uh, listen to um, and hopefully be encouraged. Maybe uh, you've engaged in a live chat with somebody here uh, that can help you, that can pray with you. Maybe you might want to share or exchange an email in this live chat with someone who wants to reach out to you. But uh, Jesus himself was said in the scriptures to be a man of sorrows and acquainted with bitterest grief. It says he was despised and rejected of men. You know how many times people wanted to stone Christ, throw him over a cliff? They called him demon-possessed and crazy. His own family showed up one time. His mother and brother showed up one time to take him out of a crowd because he was preaching because people thought he was nuts. Uh, you know... Look, look at Joseph. His brothers sold him into slavery, but yet at the time Joseph was going through those anxieties and depressions and those circumstances, none of it made sense to him. As far as he was concerned, he was obeying the Lord and doing what he was supposed to be doing and living a godly life and probably wondering, why is all this happening to me? But did God not use what Joseph went through for good for many? So don't let Satan make you feel that wherever you are in life right now, and remember, I'm bringing this up because this was an important topic on my mind when I woke up this morning. It, it really was. I uh, I put something on my WordPress blog about it. Um, it was just something that I felt was important and that I really don't talk about on this channel, but I felt that it was a topic that uh, I needed to bring up, and I felt the Lord urging me in it, so I wanted to obey him in that. Um, but uh, you're not alone. There have been greats in the scriptures. Look it up on Google. Look it up in, in the scriptures. Uh, you know, great men and women of the Bible that have struggled with anxiety and depression. And God used it not only for his glory, but to benefit other people as well. Could he be using you as a tool? And one of Satan's greatest weapons to stop you from being used for the kingdom of God is your emotional state. It's very easy to be emotionally crippled to the point where you don't want to do anything for the Lord because you're nursing that emotional crippling that's going on inside you. Maybe you're having fear of your salvation and doubt of your salvation. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage, your finances, or maybe you're just dealing with a depression and anxiety that has no name to it whatsoever. Ask God 
if he's using it to get your attention. Ask him if there's something that he wants you to do in someone else's life. Sometimes getting helping you get through your situation, what will help you is helping someone else while they're suffering. You may be suffering, but you could also help someone else while you're suffering. That way that person knows they're not alone. And there's nothing worse than going through something like that and feeling like you're alone. Even when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't want to be alone. He knew that the disciples could not take that cup from him. They could not do what had to be done and take that, that suffering away from him. Jesus knew that, but all he asked is that they would stay awake and be with him. And no, you cannot always take someone's suffering away and you can't always take their depression or their anxiety away, but you can be there for them. And you can try and comfort them and at least give them company and be there with them. And that's important. So, um, like I said, I wanted th this is kind of like a hodgepodge video where I, I wanted to uh, read you that update in the beginning of the video um, of this uh, Amazon Synod here. Um, and for those of you who are uh, joining the live chat a little bit later, welcome. Um, I went over some information uh, on this um, Amazonian Synod and some, uh, it was actually a very good article um, that a gentleman wrote. Um, and I agree with what he said, and I'll, I'll read them one more time for you, those of you who are just joining this live chat. Uh, he was really, really rebuking the Vatican and rebuking um, uh, this, uh, you know, paganism that is going on. But those of us who know the word of God, who know what the book of Daniel prophesies, who know what Revelation 17 and 18 states, know that this is coming to pass. It's being fulfilled right in front of our eyes, that this is nothing new. This is not shocking people that are familiar with biblical prophecy about what this antichrist false prophet system would be doing. All right, uh, this article starts out, for those of you who are just joining in, and if you are, welcome to this live chat. Um, I've had people ask me for more opportunities for a live chat, so here we are. Uh, the Pope, Pachamama, politics, and the periphery, everything is connected. And in this article, which I'll put a link down for you in the description section, this gentleman named Scott Wilmot wrote this uh, October 20th, 2019, which is yesterday, and stated that uh, the Pope, Pachamama, or that's another name the Amazonians use for Mother Earth or Goddess Mother Earth, politics and the periphery, everything is connected. And he goes on to talk about um the amazonian synod is and is quote one of the more bizarre and potentially very destructive events of the francis pontificate to me it's, it's just grouped in with all the other heresies that pope francis has spoken you know talking about the oh there's no hell and um you know that if you're an atheist you're fine and whatever religion you follow you're fine and we'll all meet there that having a personal relationship with christ is dangerous that we can't do that uh, he stated, God is not a divine being and able to do all things. These are things that this pontificate has stated. So this is just another thing in addition. Uh, and recently I did a video on uh, Eugenio Scalfari stating that um, he allegedly says Pope Francis says Christ is not God in the flesh. So that's another thing. Um, this is fulfilling Daniel's prophecy and Revelation 17 and 18 that states that uh, he, these blasphemies would reach up to heaven, that he would speak great things and great blasphemies against the Most High God. This is just yet another thing. And in this article, it, it shows a video of the pagan ceremony that took place um, and the statues that uh, were used. But it says here, um, uh, this gentleman goes on to say, yes, uh, she is Pachamama, the goddess of the earth or the world slash universe and some areas of the Amazon, fertility goddess in Peru and others, etc. To anyone who takes the first commandment seriously, which is thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is not kids playing with dolls, but the kind of idolatry or worship of strange gods that from first to last, the Bible and our whole tradition warn against. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. When Jesus stated, and I'll put a link down for you in the description section, those of you who are just joining into this chat, um, Jesus stated, do not suppose I have come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And, and let me look that up for you. 
Do not suppose I have come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. <clears throat> All right, and this is found in Matthew 10, 34. Jesus says himself here, okay? He says here himself, do not assume that I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And what he was talking about here was, I'm not here to make nice nice with paganism. I'm not here to make nice nice with those who want to mix oil and water, dark and light. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes of the Father except through me. He meant it. And he's either lying to us or he's telling us the truth. And there are many in LifeSite News, Church Militant, and other devout Catholics that are coming forward in outrage. And uh, against this paganism that's taking place. Uh, of course, as a Protestant believer, I've seen this being fulfilled in prophetic scripture. However, it's obviously becoming more apparent in fulfillment of Revelation 17 when God says that he would call people out of that system, come out of her or that Babylonian system, my people. And of course, Babylon is known for its paganism. And in Revelation 17, we are told that she, this Babylonian religious system, commits fornication with the kings of the earth, meaning she is in bed with every pagan religion of the world. That's okay. You know, as long as you're a good person and you believe in a higher power, it doesn't have to be Christ. But, you know, hey, as long as you're a good person, you have a good conscience, we'll all meet there. This is not bringing that sword that Christ talked about. And when I tell people that Christ said this in Matthew 10, 34, do not assume I have come to bring peace. I have come to bring a sword. Many people are shocked. They say, did he really say that? Yeah, he said that. Just like he drove people out of the temple with a whip. Remember that? He drove people out of the temple with a whip. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, we are to do good to enemies. Yes, we are to feed them. Yes, we are to give them something to drink. And yes, we are to treat them well, treat everyone the way we want to be treated. But do not compromise the truth of what Christ said about himself just to make people happy, just to make people like you. If you're a servant, who, who are you serving, Christ or man? Man's good opinion of you or are you serving Christ and standing on what he said about himself? Which is it? You know? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Um, so I'm going to be bringing this live chat to an end because I have another topic that I would like to try and cover today. Uh, hopefully, Lord willing, later today, I'd like to do a video on the uh, traditions of men versus the scriptures. All right. How do they balance on the scales? Uh, there are many today that state that the traditions of men, whether it's the catechism, church tradition, uh, that they are on the same level with God's word, the scriptures. And I'm going to be doing a video on that um, and exposing that and showing you side-by-side -side comparison from the word of God and the traditions of men, and we'll see who wins out. All right. But there are many out there that are accepting false doctrine because they believe that the traditions of men are equal with the scriptures. And I'm going to be doing a video on that either later today or tomorrow, Lord willing. Uh, but uh, if you joined in this live chat this morning, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I always enjoy the live chats. I consider you guys my family, and I love speaking with you live and chatting with you live. And I've had people emailing me lately and saying, oh, please put more live chats on. So maybe I'll try and do uh, several live chat videos a week in, ad in addition to my regular videos. So, um, so, you know, so that we can all get to know one another better. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think it's important. Um, that this fellowship continue, especially in these last days, and that we uplift one another, that we share, that we feel like we're not alone. Um, there are topics that I try and bring about on this channel that um, are not, in my opinion, spoken of widely in a church. Uh, you know, I mean, how, how often are you going to hear about uh, Freemasonry and the Jesuits and the New World Order, uh, uh, you know, this, this mystery Babylonian system? The, uh, all these things that we discuss on this channel, uh, the mark of the beast, uh, the antichrist system, the false prophet, uh, exposing the deeds of darkness, the UFO alien phenomena, 
which is another update that I want to do soon. Um, for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, it is a very real phenomenon that needs to be addressed. And the scriptures do talk about what this UFO alien phenomenon is. And uh, Christians should have an answer for those who ask them what this is all about. Uh, so please tune in for more soon, hopefully either later today or tomorrow, but I'm going to be doing a video on the traditions of men versus the scriptures. How do they balance out? Um, and I'll be doing an update on the UFO alien phenomena as well, which I believe are interdimensional beings that God's word does talk about. And there is a scriptural view on this. It is a real phenomena and God's word talks about it and Christians need to have an answer for that. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for joining in the live chat. I hope that it's been a blessing for you today. Thank you for those of you who write my PO box. Um, I get your cards and letters and um, especially the condolences I've received lately for the passing of my mother. So I thank you so much. Um, I have, even though I'm not showing it on screen, um, I've, I've been dealing with a lot of, um, uh, emotions over that myself. So uh, as a matter of fact, I need to take my own advice with the scriptures that I read today to you over anxiety and depression, and I need to think about them myself because I've spent many a night this past six or seven weeks since I lost my mother not getting a full night's sleep or not being able to eat properly, or I just break down into tears spontaneously when I see a picture of her or I think about her. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I need to take my own advice for myself. Um, so thank you for those of you who have um, written my P.O. box, who have been there to, to pray for me. Um, it means so much. And I, I truly thank you for that. I thank you for subscribing. I ask that you share these videos with people, please, that you feel may benefit from them. Um, and please tune in again soon for another live chat. I enjoy them and I hope you do too. Um, God bless you and more to come soon, guys.